Namaste and welcome back. Now we are going to be solving a question which has been repeatedly asked in companies such as D Shop, right? Now D Shop is again a very very famous product based company. More about it maybe sometime later we can discuss. But what is the question really? The question is simple. It is to find the number of trailing zeros in the binary representation of a number. Now what does this question mean? Let me show you. This is a binary number. If you look at it, trailing zeros means look at the first set bit, look at the rightmost set bit, that is the one. After that, how many zeros are there? Those are the trailing zeros. After the first rightmost set bit, the number of zeros you have are the trailing zeros. And how many trailing zeros are there? Three. Another binary number, the rightmost set bit, after that, how many trailing zeros are there? One. Another binary number, after the rightmost set bit, how many trailing zeros are there? There are a total of seven trailing zeros. Any confusion till here? Of course, one more binary number I'm giving you. The rightmost set bit is the first bit. Is there any trailing zero after that? No, so no trailing zeros. I hope you're able to think. So what is meant by trailing zeros is clear to you. Now, how do you calculate that? Again, if you listen to me carefully, I've already given you the hint. I keep saying, look at the rightmost set bit and after that, how many zeros are there? Now already you know how to work with the rightmost set bit. Now what do I mean by that? Let me show you, right? Let us assume n is 168. 168 in binary looks like this. I'm putting the position of the bits. If you look at it, the rightmost set bit is the fourth bit. Before the fourth bit, there are three zeros. Those are your number of trailing zeros, right? So how would I calculate it? Guys, it's very simple. Well, this is the logic I would use. Okay, look at that. If, if I could finally isolate only the rightmost set bit and make all other bits to the left and right as zeros, then would you agree if, if I were to convert this into decimal, I'm just putting the powers of two. If I convert it into decimal, I'll get eight. Eight is nothing, two to the power three. And look at what is there in the power three. And don't you think three is the number of trailing zeros? Beautiful. So, do you know how to take a number and only and only have the rightmost set bit? Do you know how to do this? Yes, you do. Because in this video, I have explained the very same concept, right? So, I'm not going to explain it again. You know the simple concept. All you have to do is you have n. Take n minus 1. This is n minus 1 in binary. Do and. Now, that is the result. Whatever result you got, if you XOR it with the original number, see original number n, I'm bringing it down, right? If you do XOR, then ultimately only the rightmost set bit will be preserved. Everything else will be made zero. After that, all you have to do is don't directly convert it into decimal. Instead, you want the power. How to take this power also using that log calculation? I've already explained again in this video, I have explained that part. So there is nothing new for you to learn. This is a simple one line solution where you can calculate the number of trailing zeros. I hope you're able to think. So the ability to calculate the rightmost set bit has many uses and this happens to be one such use. Now, how are we going to write code for this? Let me show you. All right, my dear friends, now listen and listen to me carefully, right? Very simple, I have a static function which returns an integer called as number of tz. Tz means trailing zeros, right? accepts an integer variable n. Now all I will do is I'll come inside that and see directly I will tell return, return. Now what to return is, I'm just showing you that operation. First thing is you must do n, right, and n minus 1. Whatever you get as the result of this, you must XOR it with the original number n. Now if you do this, you will get the decimal value, you will get 8. But you don't want 8, you want the power, right? 2 to the power 3, that 3 you want. So for that, you know how to apply the uh, log uh, logic. So that is what I will do. It's very simple. I'll just go here and I will tell uh, uh, math.log. Math.log and uh, log of base 10 I will do. So this is, I will just copy this, paste it inside, cut and paste it inside this. Right? Yeah. And this divided by uh, basically math dot uh, to the base 10, we must find log 2. Again, I've explained this previously. Please go look at it if you have forgotten. Great. So uh, ultimately, I think uh, this is giving us an error. We have to typecast it. Okay, put it within brackets. All right. Even then, 
Yeah, because this will give you double. We are telling int, right? So we have to return. Awesome, guys. Will this work? Let's check it out. So if in case I go and I just uh, execute it and I put uh, 168 and I press enter, correctly it is telling there are three trailing zeros. Any confusion till this point of time? Uh, let us assume I give one more value like uh, 128. Then if I press enter, correctly it is telling that there are seven trailing zeros because you know only that first bit will be one, right? Everything else will be zeros. Any confusion till here? Great. Now, what could be the time complexity of such a code? Very simple. It's constant operation. It's just one operation that you're doing. So it is nothing but big O of one constant time. So I hope you really enjoyed this logic, right? Seldom times what companies ask are not complicated in terms of code wise, but the logic behind this is what they are testing. And somebody who has not understood bit manipulation properly will never be able to answer such a question. But you are not of that category because you are from TAP Academy. Anyways, I will see you in the next class.